everybody, it's Pumpkinses, and welcome to another lore video. So in today's video, we are playing some bearded men with Zillion and a Twisted Fate. Look at these glorious beards right here. Fantastic. So, Zillion, Twisted Fate, why are we playing it? Well, it's really, really fun, actually. Like, I have so much fun playing this deck, but this is a deck that I workshopped a lot. And, you know, a lot of things cut, a lot of things added. Very, very interesting, and I think is a pretty good candidate for a fun deck right now. And, I will say this, the best, mark my modes, quote me, whatever, bam, quote, the best Zillion deck to date as of right now. There, I said it. So, with that outrageous statement being said, let's go over the deck a little bit. So, we got a two of, of warning shot for your early game. No, it's not really a game. I'm kidding you. Two of a warning shot to activate Monster Harpoon. Fantastic card. Absolutely fantastic card. Just, it's five damage. It's three mana, five damage. It's so good. It's so, so good. And with warning shots, it's just burst speed activation. It's great. Uh, they're also for our burst speed Riptide Rex activation. Very important. We got two of a Dune Keeper. Card's broken. It's a good early game. That's it. Pool Shark. Playing Twist of Fate. Need draw. Stone Shape. Again, Shapestone, whatever. Great card, broken, we're playing it. Ancient Hourglass, so two of an Ancient Hourglass. I really like this card. This is very, very good at keeping your Twisted Fate alive. That's mostly the target you want to use it on, or if like someone has some removal on a different unit, you can keep them alive with Ancient Hourglass as well for two mana. It is very, very good um, in this because it is very cheap and allows us to play a keep playing a lot of cards. Now, instead of Ancient Hourglass, I used to run two Rite of Negation. The problem with Rite of Negation was one, it cost four. Two, there's the side condition that needs to activate. And three, most of the removal that happens, we only really care if Twisted Fate gets removed. Like, I don't care if, like, Pool Shark gets removed, right? Like, the most important thing is can we keep, like, Twisted Fate alive um, for those, like, big removal cards? If someone had, like, a Withering Whale or something, and it killed, like, Twisted Fate and, like, one other thing. I don't care about the other thing. I don't care about the opponent healing. I just care about keeping Twisted Fate alive. So, Ancient Hourglass does that very, very well, and for two less mana, and without other side conditions. So we were like Ancient Hourglass. Uh, it's also good against, like, Dragons for, like, single combat, Concern Strike, stuff like that. We got one off of Bone Skewer. N interesting card. New card. Uh, an ally strikes an enemy, then moves to the top of your deck. I really like this card, not as a main staple, but as a one of, because it can just give you some interesting plays, some interesting out plays, and it can be used to like throw a unit to the top of your deck that you know you're going to draw because we have a lot of draws deck. Uh, Fortune Croaker as a three of, it's a good card, it draws, just a fate. Preservarium is three of, yep, Zillion is three of, yep, Merciless Hunter is three of, it's, it's just such a good card, it's just broken. Two of a quicksand, really, really good at stopping. Uh, so a lot of the decks right now are that I'm seeing are like mid-range decks with like Overwhelm, right? Overwhelm is a very hard keyword for this deck to deal with because a lot of our units, we don't have any like big units unless like Xenotype buff something. Or we get like a Rex, but even that only has four health. Same with Zillion. So we don't have a lot of ways of dealing with like heavy attack units and quicksand is just a way of getting rid of the Overwhelm keyword to save our life total. Three of a Xenotype Researcher. Uh, pretty interesting. We have a lot of draws, so we are likely, if we play one of these early enough, to get one of the buff cards, and having a plus three, plus three buff on, like, any of our units is just really helpful, because it's just something this deck does not have as big units. Two of them salvage, obvious reasons. Three of Twisted Fate, Monster Harpoon, and Riptide Rex. So that is the deck. Um, a little bit of intro before we go into some games. I played multiple games beforehand. I actually made a video on this deck beforehand. But my mic wasn't on, apparently, I guess. OBS was weird, and instead of automatically syncing up to my mic, it decided not to. So, I don't have any audio of me talking for the next game, so instead, I am going to play the games, show the games, and I will talk over them, narrating my thoughts and actions as things are going on. So that's what we're going to get, going to do. Let's get into it. Uh, so our first game is against a deep deck. Uh, it's funny because like my my face right now talking is overlapping my other face talking. You can see like there's a there's a small little like overlap in the corner, which is kind of amusing. But yeah, so we are against a deep deck. Um, pretty standard. We got Zillion on two. We're playing Zillion on two. Makes it nice and easy. We're gonna put more time bombs into our deck. 
and we can draw Preservarium because we're playing against the deep deck, so they are a lot slower. Um, because they're a lot slower, we can try to kind of power level Twisted Fate in this matchup. And the Hourglass is also fantastic for that because we can keep them alive. The attack with Zillion there, great attack. Um, the if like if he trades with Zillion, that's fine. Like Zillion's health, honestly, like doesn't matter much. So you know we get the one free damage regardless. Get some more draw. We got some early game. Gonna just end the round here. Want to play Twisted Fate next turn and then have mana enough to keep him alive. There we go. We'll take the blue card again. We are trying to hyper level Twisted Fate. Picking up a salvage from that. My mouse is moving everywhere because I am talking a lot. Not me right now, but like my my mouse of me playing the game. This is so this is so weird. I'm looking at myself in a mirror, guys. This is very strange. Uh, so we drew a monster harpoon really, really good in order to deal with Maokai. Sadly, we don't have any activators, and it is their turn. So a monster harpoon will not be played this game. Or this round, I mean. Um, the opponent's playing to do the, uh, his annoying little sapling. So we're going to be forced to, well, first I'm going to salvage because, you know, might get other cards that will help, like not a zillion, but namely a, uh, shape stone is what we are looking for. Now I did draw into a warning shot. So monster and harpoon is something we could do, but keeping twist of fate alive is a little more important. Uh, we don't need the pool shark for any defense, so we're gonna preservarium instead, and see if we can drop draw into something else, right? Because he has no mana, so we know without a shadow of a doubt we can ancient hourglass to protection. But we don't need to do that if we have shape stone, which we draw in. Luckily, we draw into. That works out pretty well for us. We're just gonna trade down here, keep our twist of fate alive. He is the most important component of this game right now, and we'll zillion block because again, zillion doesn't really matter after his play effect, and we'll save some damage. He's, uh, he's, he's tossing a lot of cards, though. That's, like, five he tossed from playing that unit, and it's, like, another four he tosses from this. That's, like, that's a lot of toss. That's a lot of toss. You know. Playing our pool shark, getting more draw for Twist of Fate. Twist of Fate will be at seven draw this turn. And we got a time bomb. So that seven turns into eight. Twisted Fate is one card away from leveling up. Really, really good for us. All right, we're getting whaled. So I could either Hourglass here or Shape Stone. I'm going with Shape Stone because we're going to level up Twisted Fate this turn, I believe, is what my thought process here is. Nope, I'm just going to kill Maokai. That's fair. I, I see that too. So Twisted Fate will level up next turn. Maokai is dead here, or try to um, reduce the amount of tossing and Maokai level up we can do, because Maokai level up's pretty bad for us. That being that we are a deck that likes to draw so much, so not being able to draw stuff without killing ourselves is very bad. Uh, attack with the Twist of Fate here, it's basically a free attack. Not much he can do about this, so we'll take that 5 damage. And now Twist of Fate's leveled up. And we activate the other monster harpoon too. I guess you can win them all. Yes, I can, Twist of Fate. Thank you. Bop. So now we have Monster Harpoon active. We got Merciless Hunter. We got Twist of Fate leveled. He's gonna probably try some shenanigans. We still have the hourglass in our hand too. He's trying to vile feast our Twist of Fate, that's fine. Uh, he's probably setting up for something else. Vile Feasting is probably setting up for another whale or something like that. Doesn't really matter too much. We will zilli second zillion. And go for another time bomb. Try and blow up his board a little bit. He's going to go for the whale now, I believe. There is the whale. And we can Ancient Hourglass. Boop. And keep our Twisted Fate alive. And we get the red card off of that. So now he goes for a Yetison. I'm sorry also if I'm not talking into the camera. 
because the way my setup works, I have to play this the video on my second screen. And yes, a lot of stuff's happening in the game right now. I'm not addressing it. Uh, so we red card. Red card does kill two of his units. But since he Yetisoned and he's tossing two, his sea monster is still active. I'm hovering around that Withering Whale a lot because I'm uh, I'm just pointing out. This is the part where, like I said in the intro, that Ancient Hourglass is better because we don't care if other stuff happens. Like that three health from Whale doesn't matter. Didn't matter at all. The, the our one mana, our uh, little dude dying from Whale also didn't matter. Our Zillion taking damage didn't didn't matter. So we could Monster Harpoon this, but it's really not worth it. It's a 5-4 that's going to keep tossing stuff. Doesn't really matter. Uh, something to note, though, is that we are unfortunately at a health of 13 mana, which is not uh, not us atrocity range. So that could be worrisome, but definitely not worrying about it in this game. Other things to worry about. And here's something really, really interesting, which I had no idea of. Going to play the Riptide Rex here, first of all. Because it's just great starting card, kills this thing. Twisted Fate plays a gold card here, which is really interesting. So, I did not know that um, Ancient Hourglass doesn't reset Twisted Fate's, like, effect. Which is... So, if you Ancient Hourglass Twisted Fate and he still has cards left, you'll play those cards. If he doesn't have cards left to play, he won't play any. It's just something interesting to note. Uh, this is pretty bad for us. We got Maokai milled. So, this is awkward. It'll be a lot of thought process here going with. Um, so, I'm hovering over Bone Skewer right now. The reason that is, is because we have like four cards in our deck. And most of the cards in our deck are draw cards, right? But with Bone Skewer we can put zillion back into our deck we get the we get the zillion draw so we get one more card and then we fill up the zillion pops in we get four time bombs so even if time bombs draw we effectively get a like more turns we can stall out for you know effectively like two more turns concerning time bombs will end up drawing uh whenever we play one but we do effectively get more turns to stall so that is really nice. Our Twist of Fate's going to die. Um, we can't risk going with the uh, Salvage right now because that is, is literally our entire deck pool. So not only worth it to keep Twist of Fate, he also would end up drawing us to death. So it's definitely not worth it to keep him. But Zillion coming in clutch. The, the Bone Skewer on the Zillion really, really coming in clutch. Uh, Preservarium, absolutely terrible card to have. Not going to lie, like... Absolutely terrible card to have in the bottom four of your deck with this. But we are going to have to go for something like very, uh, very mid-range heavy and very aggressive right now. Because we need to just put as much pressure on as possible. We definitely have an advantage uh, with how many units that we have because we have, you know, a lot more in our hand. He only has one card. So we have the advantage there. So we need to push that. Also really annoying that his sapling spawns after the landmark. So like, I don't even get the, the explosion like I want to. That's annoying. So here, like I said, we are just going for the widest board possible. Playing Doomkeeper first, because we're going to override the Preservarium landmark. But he says no. Hits us with a Bio Feast. Upsetting stuff. We do still have two fearsome units, so as long as we get rid of his 6-5 blocker, he will take 8 damage, guaranteed. So we are going to Merciless Hunter his, uh, his Maokai. We'll kill the Maokai with the, uh, with the Riptide Rex, because otherwise his 2-1 would just block Riptide. And this is the scary part. So he played Treasure Trove, and so I, I kind of got spooked a little bit here, and I went, okay, he went Treasure Trove, I'm going to attack immediately. So we're going to kill his unit on the stack. So hopefully we can get all of our damage off that we need to and be able to survive whatever comes out of Treasure Trove. So that is, hence, this attack here. A little bit of a debate on whether or not I felt it was necessary to keep Maokai alive. In the end, I decide it's more worth it to kill Maokai so he doesn't spawn more saplings. Yep. 
Yeah, our opponent got a Spell Thief. Super, super annoying. Um, not really sure. Like, there's so many spells that we played. Uh, I'm going through, I'm scrolling through the list right now. So, like, you can get Monster Harpoon. He can get Bone Skewer. He can't get any of those skills, but he could get, like, uh, the Hourglass. He can get Warning Shot, Shape Stone. Got a fair amount of stuff for him to choose from. So he ended up getting a Bone Skewer. So he killed our Rex, put the Maokai back at the top of his deck. And he took a lot of damage. So now we know his top draw is Maokai. So he has an Icefield Archer. That really doesn't matter. It's whatever. We have another Time Bomb, so he'll just die at the end of next turn anyway. Kinku Wayfinder. It's just a 2-3. Sure. Again, doesn't matter. Uh, we have 4 damage guaranteed because of our Fearsome Units. And he's an Ancient Crocolith. So... Also, doesn't matter. We got a 2-1. We got a blocker for it. We know he... So he has Payday. So we know he doesn't have Atrocity, at least next turn, because he has Maokai uh, as his top draw. So he needs to have Atrocity as the second card in his deck because Maokai is the top draw. And, that's, and then he also needs to be able to do 7 damage to us now. But I'm obviously not going to allow that, and I'm just going to jump block him. Just kidding. I'm not going to jump block him. Because I think the odds of him having Atrocity is so, so little that I'm willing to play around it so I can get a guaranteed lethal on the open attack. That is exactly what I'm going for. A little ballsy. A little risky. Uh, but it's also risky that we have three cards left in our deck. Now we have two cards left in our deck. He's got a Maokai, I got a Xenotype Researcher. Now, amusingly about this, Xenotype Researcher, she hits, we win. He only has three health because next turn, and our opponent surrendered because they realized. I mean, again, I would have stayed for one more turn because if he ended up drawing Atrocity, he would kill us, but he did not want to. Zillion TF playing out very, very well, as you can see. Really like uh, how this deck plays. Very versatile, a lot of different options to go with. Um, we leveled up Twisted Fate, but that the Twisted Fate level didn't even do very much for us at all. It was mostly the fact that we had a lot of mid-range pressure that allowed us to win that game. And a lot of constant draw, being able to refill our hand and options. Okay, so the next game is going to be against Draven Ezreal. Now, a uh, small problem with Draven Ezreal is that it's really good at killing Twisted Fate. So, we almost can't really play for the Twisted Fate win condition because we're uh, there's there's so many ways that they can kill Fate, being at only has two health that we're just we're probably not going to level Fate. So we have to play uh, for a little more aggressive style, and that is why I'm starting out with Dune Keeper. We're going to start getting four damage on him right away. You know, we do have a fair amount of things to do little bits of damage. Like warning shots, we have our finisher with Rex. So we might actually be able to kill him if we go more aggressively if he doesn't have answers. Playing Zillion. It's on curve. Why not? Get some time bombs. Sure, sure, sure. And I hear I have a, a choice between Xenotype Researchers or Merciless Hunter. I'm going Merciless Hunter because if he plays like Draven or if he plays Ezreal or something like that on curve, I want to have Merciless Hunters to kill that. And that's also why we're starting with the attack as opposed to summoning Merciless Hunters first. Is because I want to play Merciless Hunters reactively to what he plays so I can get that vulnerable on an important unit. So he's going to Static Shock, which I think is a waste of mana already. I guess if he doesn't have much in his hand, but it just, it's four mana to like kill, what, a 2-1 and damage Zillion by one? So I'm playing a Shape Stone just to basically annoy him, make his spell even more worthless. And then he's going to Mystic Shot, which is so good for me. Because then he doesn't have Mystic Shot to use on Twisted Fate. Because he used it to kill a, like, a little dude anyway. I will press a very enforcement more draw. Boop, which we got. I think the Preservarian for draw was a little bit of a mistake there. I actually would have preferred keeping the extra mana so I could uh, Hourglass. So I'm playing Twisted Fate. I'm debating playing Twisted Fate. 
But I, I am going to play Twisted Fate here um, because I don't really have another play because he's passing. I don't really want to play my uh, my rider yet without him playing anything without with losing the vulnerable. So I'm just playing Twisted Fate to draw and get some more value out of him. Uh, I'm fully anticipating that he will be able to kill Twisted Fate here, which is again why I should have saved mana for Hourglass. And there's the get excited. So he burned a sum treasure uh, to play that get excited. So that's pretty good for us. And now we have a Xenotype Researchers. And we got our Riptide Rex, which I said we can use for endgame. And Quicksand is really, really nice against Draven and Ezreal as well. Um, we can trade into our... Uh, what am I saying? Our researchers. So, he's using a Scorched Earth here on Zillion. I think this is a huge mistake by him. Uh, I haven't played any Time Bombs yet. Zillion is a one attack unit. <laughs> Not even close to leveling. And he already got his value because he got Time Bombs upon playing. It's just... It's so, it's so weird to me. Like, he used a 3-mana Scorched Earth to kill a 1-attack unit that is basically useless until Tide Bombs come out. Seems like he wasted uh, a lot of resources there. And now we just Monster Harpoon Ezreal. We attacked with a 3-3, we got the Plunder proc, Ezreal's dead. And we are sitting against a, uh, a slow burn deck at 20 health at round 6. We're not doing too bad. He's going to try and kill my unit. Uh, I'm just going to Ancient Hourglass here to get more 3-3 three, three buffs into our deck. And might as well keep our 3-3 three, three alive anyway, you know. Why not? Boop. At this point, I'm thinking I could Salvage, but I'll just save the mana to use it for next turn. Uh, we do end up burning one mana, but it doesn't really matter too much. And now we get our, uh, our Xenotype back, Fortune Croaker, trying to draw into something with a lot of buffs. Unfortunately, just get a Shape Stone. Now, I really want something. So we played two Xenotypes so far, right? So there's six units in our deck, or, you know, some units in our deck that are very buffed. So drawing more cards, trying to get a buffed unit. Sadly, we're still not getting any. Um, so seeing that we didn't get any buffed units, just attacking, doing five damage, which puts him at a little bit precarious position because next turn we do have warning shot into riptide rex and that's uh that's a pretty good amount of damage he's going with the big boy tribeam and probably later here gets a legion general which is uh, honestly pretty sucky for him and i'm gonna preservarium because i want big units i didn't get any big units well i guess i'll time bomb and this time bomb um allows me to activate riptide rex without the use of a warning shot. So there you go. We got synergy. We got time bomb. We got Rex synergy. We got a, a dead a dead frog. And now it says there's upgraded. I'm so good, I myself. Hmm. This is a point where it's it's starting to get a little scary for us. Uh, with an upgrade Ezreal, he can do a lot of damage. Thankfully, he only has two cards left in his hand. So if he had more cards, this would be a lot more intimidating. I am worried that one of the cards is Captain Farron, so we could like attack here and then pop a Farron. The thing is, I'm just gonna Rex, and Ezreal's definitely gonna die. As you can see, Ezreal dies. So if he has Farron in his hand, he can either play Farron here, but not use Ezreal's spell, not use any of Ezreal's potential damage, and play Farron, at which point we will definitely win because we have a vulnerable thing that can make him vulnerable next turn. And we have three damage in our hand, and I think we only need, like, one more damage outside of that. So if we draw, like, a second time bomb, we just win. But he's choosing right now uh, to go for just as much Ezreal damage as possible. He's going to play a Mystic Shot on the Rex and something else after. So he's Mystic Shotting Rex, and he's Static Shocking. So he's getting 
five damage uh, on our Nexus from a combination of things with Ezreal. So, pretty good damage wise, but I mean, his board's dead. I still have a six attack unit. He probably has a way to deal with it, so I don't have a six attack unit punching him in the face. Yeah, so he is a robot. Doesn't really matter. Xenotype. Either way, we still have the ability... Like, time bombs are neat, and they're cute, and we can definitely win with them. Like, I could honestly just do nothing with time bombs. But I could also just win by, uh... Yeah. Vulnerabling his Farron. Like I said last turn, right? Like, I just vulnerable his Farron. And now I can attack for 4 damage, and he doesn't have anything to stop it, because his bot's only at 2 health. Merciless Hunter, by the way. Freaking ridiculous card. Just such a, such a, such a good card, you know? Uh, this is to put some salt in the wounds, telling him that I could kill his Farron anyway. And that even if, <laughs> even if he could block the Rior, it wouldn't matter. I also had enough damage to kill him with Time Bombs and 2 Warning Shots, so... He was pretty screwed in a myriad of ways there. So for our next game, third and final game, playing against a Vladimir Sejuani instead of a Vladimir Brahm. So, interesting there. Um, the problem is, this is potentially a Scargrounds deck, and I don't see why you wouldn't play Scargrounds if you're playing Vladimir. But it's a Scargrounds deck. And this deck has a lot of, like, one damage pings, right? We got things like Time Bombs and Twisted Fate's red cards, and even Riptide Rex is like two damage that turns into one damage pings. So my mindset going into this is if they play Scargrounds, I pretty much just surrender. Like there's there's almost no way that I can deal with the board with Scargrounds. Um, Monster Hunt Monster Harpoon is definitely a help to that. But you know, if things get once things get going, Scargrounds is a little difficult. That being said, he didn't Scargrounds, he just has a bunch of weakish units. We're fine with trading here. No problem with that. And here's at an awkward play. We could Xenotype Researchers, but he has four mana, and I'm thinking he's going to play something for four mana. He's going to play some kind of big card, probably with four to five health. So even though it's not really ideal to red card because I'm feeding Vladimir's level up, I'm doing one damage to myself. He plays a card with 5 health, and so I can Monster Harpoon. And now if he has any health buffs, he would play them here. He has no health buffs, because he definitely would have kept that card alive. So now I'm actually free to attack with Twisted Fate, because I know from that play he has no health buffs. Like that. I'm, I'm just mousing over, telling you guys that, hey, I shot him. He's dead. Pew pew. <laughs> Got him. Uh, taking this damage here, don't really want to trade our Twisted Fate. That's new. If we don't have to. Play a Xenotype. I'm, this Avalanche, I also think, is really awkward. Because he kills two of his units just to kill my Twisted Fate. And, like, that's fine. Ah, I have another Twisted Fate in hand. Twisted Fate had, like, what, two charges on him? So it didn't even matter that much. I'm attacking to activate Monster Harpoon without using a warning shot. That's the reason. And I see he plays Scar Mother, so I'm just going to go for a blue card. No need to uh, Monster Harpoon right now. We can just use Warning Shot next turn if we really want a Monster Harpoon. It was more so just to give myself the option of doing so if you're to play something else. But can go for a Salvage. Don't really have much else to do. We did burn one of our big units, but... We end up drawing a big Xenotype Researchers. Very nice. You can use that as a very effective blocker against his uh, Overwhelm Stick. She summons a second Overwhelm Stick. So we'll play our 6-6. Six, six. Our 6-6 six, six for 3 mana. Not too bad. So this attack is looking pretty decent for us. He's probably going to have an Ice Shard. I mean, I already know it's a nice shirt, but in this case, it's it's pretty safe to consider. 
uh, assume that he has an Ice Shard, which I'm looking at it and I'm taking eight, a lot of damage. Uh, we could go for a Monster Harpoon here, but you want to do that after the attack so we don't increase their attack more. Uh, that being said, I'm not going to go for the Monster Harpoon here. What, kill the 9 1? With playing the second, uh, or playing a zillion here, we can pretty assuredly draw into uh, a time bomb. Hope well, not surely, but hopefully we can draw into a time bomb, and we won't have to resort to monster harpooning a nine one. So now we get guaranteed that we have a five six that we're drawing. So that's a really really good blocker for us, but. We drew up to our Rex, and Rex is super good. And now this is kind of an all or nothing play. The safer play is to play, go for Twisted Fate's level up, play the Croaker. It's six health unit. It already gives lots of um, health to block with. And if I keep the warning shot, I can use it for monster harpoons on a later turn. But I'm risky, I say fuck it, and I'm playing the Riptide Rex, which works out exactly how I thought it would, you know? With having five of the six shots targeting <laughs> the thing with seven health. Really, really good for us. Targets exactly how we need it to, to kill both of his scary units. We do lose our uh, big five, six for two mana. Yeah. And see, this is why I run Riptide decks. I have seen uh, um, lists from people like Silverfuse and from Grappler and probably a couple others too that I saw. Um, and they none of them ran Riptide Rex. And I think that's a mistake. Riptide is really easy to activate in this deck. And it's a very powerful effect. Um, for removing bigger units that this deck only has in the likes of Monster Monster Harpoon. So he's just trying to kill my uh, Rex here, which is fair. So he's going for a couple one damage pings, dropping Rex's health low enough. Whatever. Fine by me. We still have a Twisted Fate, which we can level up, I believe, this turn. I think he's at he's at seven so we literally just level him up by salvaging it's pretty nice and quicksand is probably one of the best cards i could draw here um something that i'd be like worried about is him playing a big overwhelm unit maybe a captain farin or uh something like that so we can just stop any big overwhelm attack with our quicksand We're drawing lots of time bombs. Normally I'd love to play these time bombs, but again, I want to keep the quicksand just in case. I don't know what he's doing with all that mana. We definitely have the board and we... <laughs> Riptide Rex just going straight for damage. I am going to attack first instead of doing the Rex first. And that's to basically just guarantee that damage. Uh, so we can Rex here and then time bomb... And he's dead on the next time bomb. All right, there's very little things he could play there to actually stop Rex's attack plus time bomb from killing him. So, because time bomb will activate red card in case he didn't get that. And then we got the red card, and then we have the time bomb, which will win. So, there you go. Just as, I Just as Zillion thought, indeed. So you can see we got the nice win right there. I'm going to switch back over to my uh, game screen. So, 
a lot of great games there and against a lot of different decks too. Um, I will say that those aren't necessarily, you know, the meta decks, right? It's not Thresh Nasus, it's not TLC, and it's not uh, Zero Aurelia. Against those, I will say uh, TLC, very, very difficult unless you're able to monster Harpoon Lissandra before she summons Watcher. It's super, super hard matchup. Would not recommend. Uh, Zero Aurelia. I have not as bad, honestly, as I thought. I have about a 45% win rate against it, which isn't great. But it means that if I try to climb with this deck, I don't auto-lose against the Zero Aurelia, which is important, right? It's There's a chance that I beat it, and that's good. And against Thresh Nasus, honestly haven't played against any Thresh Nasus. Don't really know. Uh, if I play against more Thresh Nasus, I'll probably put in Rite of Negation so I can stop Atrocity. But as I've played against none of them so far, doesn't seem like I need it. All that being said, with the games, um, one thing. Let me know if you like me narrating over my own gameplay. Not that I'm going to do this often because it's like double the time that it should have taken to record a video because I had to record it and then narrate. But I don't know. Let me know if you like me narrating over games. Maybe I'll try to find some other games. Maybe I'll, if you guys want me to narrate over your games, I'll set up something. You can send me some games and then I can narrate over them if you like that. Or if you don't, I'll just keep making my videos my normal way. I'll end up doing videos my normal way regardless. I'm going to stop rambling. Thank you everybody so much for watching. If you liked the video, please hit me up with one of those likes and a subscribe and a comment. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.